I'm going to start off with a pretty easy one and feel free to follow along. In this example, I want to select all the columns and all the records from the customers table. Now notice here in the query window, select is already there for us, as well as a semicolon. Now when you end your select statements, it's good practice to end the statement with a semicolon so the system knows that you're done. And that's actually required in some other forms of SQL, but not actually required here in Access. But if you do want to follow along with good practice, go ahead and in all select statements with a semicolon. All right, so I want to see all the records in the customers table. So I'm going to use my asterisk. I'm going to select everything from customers. All right, now that should do it. In my ribbon, I'll go up to the top and click Run. And there it is. It's bringing back all 29 records from that table. Now, I'll go ahead and switch back over to my SQL view. And to do that, I'm going to go up to the View button on the top left-hand side and change it back to SQL view. Now, just to let you know, SQL is not case sensitive and select and from don't need to be capitalized. But again, I'm showing you that here so that it's easier for you to read. All right. Next, I'm going to try that again, but this time I want to select all the columns and all the records from the products table. So all I have to do here is just highlight customers and change that to products. Again, I'll go ahead and run the query. And there we are. There should be 14 columns and 45 records. Now in the last two examples, I used the asterisk to retrieve all the data. Next, I'm going to specify the columns that I want to use. So in this example, I want to select the company names, state, and phone numbers for all of my customers. So I'm going to head back to SQL by clicking on the View drop-down and changing that back to SQL View. And you have to really be familiar with the information that you're pulling out here. And luckily for you, I'm totally familiar with the tables, but you also might want to spend a few minutes just getting used to seeing what information is in what tables. Now, I want to see all of my customer information, so I know that I have to pull the information from the customers table. And again, I want to see the name of the company, the state that they're in, and their phone number. So I'm going to get rid of my asterisk, and I'm going to first type in company, followed by a comma, and the field for state in my table, my underlying table, is actually called state province. So how I'm going to type that here is I'm going to start off with square brackets. And the reason why I'm starting off with the uh, square bracket here is because the name of the column, which actually I, I should probably spell correctly here, province, with an N, there we go, and close out my square bracket, the name of the column has a special character in it. It has a forward slash. And if I just typed out space province without the square brackets around it, the system wouldn't like it and it would throw me an error. So if there's any special characters in the name of your fields, you'd want to surround the name of the field with square bracket. All right, I'll separate that with a comma because I also need the phone number. Now, I'm going to start off here with a square bracket again, and the reason here is because in the underlying table, the name of the field is business phone. It's two words separated by a space, and a space is actually treated like a special character here as well. So again, I need to surround the name of the column with square brackets. All right, so I have select company name state province, and business phone from customers. I'll go ahead and run that. 
and there it is. Perfect. Again, 29 records and three columns. Now, you can also specify the order in which you want the columns to show up in your select statement. In the underlying table, the company name, state, and phone actually happen to be in the same order, but maybe I want to see, for some reason, state first. I could have typed that in to my SQL statement. I could have typed in state, province, company, and phone, business phone, if that's the way I wanted to see it. You don't have to follow the order of the underlying table unless you really want to, which I did here. Okay, I'll show you three more select statements before moving on to the next topic. Next, I want to select the product name, list price, and category for the records in the products table. So first I'll go ahead and get rid of customers and change that to products. And again I want to see the product name, list price, and category. So I'll delete the columns that I had from the last query. And product name does have a space in it in the underlying table. So I will wrap it up in, of course, square brackets, right? I'll separate it by a comma and add in the list price field, wrapped up again in square brackets, and last but not least, I also want to see category. I'll go ahead and run that, and there we are, 45 records. Now, switching back to my SQL view, just to let you know, so far when I've been creating these SQL statements, I've been deleting them or typing over the previous ones, right? And that's because here inside of Access, you actually can't type in more than one SQL statement inside of the query window. Now, if you're used to using other types of SQL, like SQL Server, you'll know that you can, of course, type in multiple SQL statements all on one sheet or all on one query window. Here inside of Access, it's just one at a time. That's why I keep deleting it and starting again. Okay, in my next example, I want to use the Employees table, and I want to select the first name, last name, city, and state of the employees. So first, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the products table and type in the name of the table that I want to use, which is employees. And I'll get rid of all of my fields from the products table. And I want to add in the first name field. And you know it has a space in that column name. That's why I surrounded it with the square brackets, right? Okay, I also want the last name field followed by city and state province. Move my cursor out the way so you can see that. And since state province has that special character of the forward slash, I'm again wrapping it up in square brackets. All right, I'll go ahead and run that. And there I go, again, my nine employees but I'm just seeing the four fields that I selected in my SQL statement. All right, back to SQL view. And in the last example in this lecture, I'm going to use the customers table to select the company name, state, first name, last name, and job title of the customers. So I'll change my employees table to the customers table. And I'm not going to get rid of everything here because I do want to use first name and last name. And those field names are the same in both tables. So to save a little bit of typing, I'll go ahead and leave that. So after select, I'll go ahead and type in company, followed by a comma. And then I need state province, and state province is here at the end. So I'm going to highlight that just by using my shift and my arrow key. I'm going to cut it by using Control X, moving over before first name, Control V to paste, and comma, just to be a little bit faster here. So I've got company, state province, first name, last name, and then lastly, I need job title. 
and that's it. Let me go ahead and make sure that works by clicking on Run. Perfect, it works. So in this lecture, you've gotten more familiar with the select statement, and you've seen how easy it is to retrieve the data from your tables. Again, the syntax is select, then the name of the columns that you want to retrieve, or an asterisk to retrieve all of the columns, and then from, and the name of the table that you want to retrieve the data from.